Hi friends and woolies, and welcome to episode 19 of Wool Gathering Collective. I'm your hostess, Meredith, and you can find me on Instagram as Shop, M-E-R-E-O-S-H-O-P, and I'm on YouTube as well, of course, as Wool Gathering Collective. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been just over a month since I last recorded. Lots of exciting things have been happening, which I'll get into later on in the Out and About and the Woolies section. And today I'm drinking coffee in my Gina Denning pottery mug. It's getting kind of a glare. It's really good mug. It's nice and thick, so things stay really hot. The time changed last weekend, and so right now it's 10.30, but the lighting is closer to is 11.30 lighting, obviously. And I just feel really discombobulated ever since the time change. I just, I always struggle with it every year. And this year is no different. So if I'm a little spacey, I apologize. Um, I've been taking lots of naps and trying to just, I don't know. I i Googled, you know, what to do to help your body cope with the time change. So I've been kind of implementing some of those things. And I think they've been working, but I'm still a little bit out of it. So hopefully this will make sense today and <laughs> it'll go well. Today's segments include the following, finished projects, on the needles, out and about, curating life, and woolies, of course. I have one prize from last week to give away in woolies, the Taproot magazine. I have another giveaway, and I'm also going to announce or draw the winners from the Canada Cal. They're all in here in my jar. There's over 300 entries in here, just saying. That was a lot of cutting. So anyway, get your own yummy drink, gather up your knitting, and let's get started. I have quite a few finished projects to show you. I have, well, I have finished three, but I can only find two. <laughs> so I'll have to just describe the other one. And it's been on Instagram, so you might have seen it already. Uh, the first is a hat I made for TJ. It's called the Strib Hat. And it is made out of Plymouth Encore, I believe. We were in Maine last summer, or right in last spring. And we were at a little yarn shop, a yarn and quilting shop in Holton. And he saw this hat on display and asked if I could make it for him. And quite honestly, he never asked me to knit for him. So I jumped at the chance and then procrastinated all summer and finished it. I'm, I finished it probably hmm, the end of September, I think. But not. it was a work in progress the last episode. So yeah, it's just very simple. It's ribbing and alternating colors and a simple crown decrease. I'll try it on. It actually looks pretty good on everybody. And it's comfortable and I know I'm talking up acrylic here. What's going on? But yeah, let me just see. I, I keep all of my yarn labels and I have little photo albums, and I'm just trying to see if I have it in here. I have a, this little one and a bigger one. I think it's in the bigger one. Let me check though. Because I'll tell you the composition. It's not 100% acrylic. Here's my other one from the dollar store. You can kind of see how I keep things in here. Here it is. Encore. It's made in Pennsylvania. 
It's 75 acrylic, 25% wool. So, yeah, so that's TJ's strib hat. Uh, the second thing I made was another hat. It was called Caramel Brulee by, I think, Alicia Plummer. And I can't find it. It's I've been wearing it, so, I mean, it could possibly be, even be in my car. Because um, what's been happening is the mornings have been very cold. But then by the time lunchtime rolls around, it's 22 degrees and it's so warm, you don't need a hat anymore. Okay, and next up are my jelly roll socks. I pulled them out of the hamper to show you. <laughs> Are they cute? They're by, they're a pattern written by Mara Catherine Breiner. And she's done some really cute socks out there and I really enjoyed this pattern. I showed it off to my co coworkers and they were quite enthralled with their little rolls. That really made them curious. So thank you for a beautiful pattern. I used um, the colored yarn. It's a mini skein from Heidi. Uh, Heidi's by hand. Heidi Wolfrat from Moncton. And the gold is Manuel Still Uruguay. So yes, I feel like I've been accomplishing a lot. I finished the hap the Hansel Hap, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's everything I have for finished projects, and next up is on the needles. On the needles. I have quite a few projects going, and I think that satisfies me on a, for a couple reasons is I get bored easily so it's nice to have something else to, to go to and then of course it's nice to have projects ready for all sorts of different situations at home knitting car knitting social knitting um, but I was listening to Stacy Perry she has a, an audio podcast and you may know her as very pink she produces excellent knitting tutorials and she is definitely my go-to resource for uh, video knitting tutorials and it seems like on Facebook she's always finishing something and showing it and somebody asked her why she was able to knit so fast and if she could talk about improving your speed of knitting and she said that really she's just an average knitter but that she only works on one project one personal project at a time and that's why it seems that she's finishing so much and I can honestly say that when I was pumping out those hats the two hats and the socks I, I was working on one thing at a time and look I finished three things and now I have five things on the needles and nothing's done so <laughs> I I mean do what works for you, obviously, and do whatever you want to do because you're a grown-up. But if you're ever kind of feeling like you're not, you're always knitting and never finishing, try focusing on one thing. I think that will help. All right, so I have one, two, how many things? One, two, three, three things to show you, and my Viola socks are still on the needles. And then, of course, there's the things from this summer that I haven't finished and I don't need to talk about because <laughs> you've heard it before. All right, uh, let's start with my biggest project that's on the needles. It is the June Grass Sweater by Carrie Bostic Hogg, Hodge, Hogg. And she created the June Grass Sweater specifically for Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver, Colorado. And they also created a 100% Colorado yarn of the same name. Oh, there we go. 
stretching brush. It's a lovely blend. Rustic in some ways, like you can see there's a little schlub here. Uh, it's two ply. Smells not too sheepy, but it's so soft. And honestly, when I was knitting with it, I thought I thought that maybe there was microfiber in it. It has just that silken quality to it. And it is 25% Colorado Gray Wensleydale, 75% Colorado Merino Rambouillet. And it's 250 yards and it's a DK weight. And it's just, I have the skeins uh, to knit the, the June grass sweater. And I will show you how far I've gotten. This is living in my Matter Made project bag. They're really cool. They're kind of like those outdoor waterproof bags where you roll them. <laughs> and then swing it around and clasp it together so it can it can clasp onto your bag or whatnot. I got this, I picked it up at um, Common Ground Fair. Anyway, so I have done most of the, I like gray, can you tell? <laughs> most of the neck, the arm increases, arms are on holders, and I'm down here now. Obviously, I, I'm at the point where it says, you know, knit for like six inches after the armhole, and it feels like it's the longest six inches in the world, but here I go, I'm going along. Anyway, yeah, it's a, it's really nice to knit. Uh, as with most of Carrie's patterns, it's, uh, I don't want to say simple, Simplistic designs um, with really thoughtful um, features, I guess I should say. The only thing, and I've been a bad knitter. I didn't read through the whole pattern before I started. The only thing I hope is that there is some finishing for the neck because this is, it looks quite unfinished to me because it is. It's like my cast on edge pretty much, so. Yeah, that's my June grass sweater. I don't have a timeline to finish it or anything. But I've only used two skeins. Well, finishing up the second. And I bought seven. I think I'll probably only need six, but I'm just wondering why I'm not on my third one by now. Anyway, it'll come. I finally have gotten to the point where like I'm knitting, I'm picking a size that will fit me now, not later, not in the future. And I'm picking a size that will be comfortable, will have the proper ease instead of the size I think I should be wearing. I think we've all been there. Anyway, it's, I mean, it's not even like hand knit sweaters have the size on the back of the neck anyway so anyway so that's my June grass sweater hopefully I will uh, be able to show you it like at least on the next episode or maybe it'll be finished who knows the next project I will show you is my entwined scarf and this is a project by Jane Richmond or pattern by Jane Richmond and it was published in her latest collaboration with Shannon Cook, Very Shannon. And the name of that collaboration, it's their latest book. It's called Within, Knitting Patterns to Warm the Soul. And I should have brought it over, but last year I did a test knit for Shannon that actually is in this book. You know what? I'm going to go find it. Hold on a second. Okay, <clears throat> I found the test knit I did for Shannon last year. It's called Tread, 
and it's knit in wolf oak far. So luxuriously soft. Feels like a micro microfiber cashmere blend, but it's not. It's uh, the construction of the yarn is the chainette, which probably you've seen a lot of lately. Um, it's kind of becoming popular. Or as somebody I met last night would say, it's trending right now. So, yeah. And I have a couple pom-poms. I just haven't decided. I have a caramel colored pom-pom and I have a burgundy wine colored pom-pom. So, I don't know what will happen there. There's that. All right, so Tread is in the same publication as my next um, work in progress. And like I said, I, I knit this last winter and, you know, I knew it was going to be released in October, so I waited a really long time. So it was worth it, though. <laughs> All right, so like I said, this is the Entwined Scarf by Jane Richmond. I'll show you what it's knit in first. It's knit in Cascade Yarns Magnum. And it's a really, there's kind of like bluey strands throughout it. I don't know if it focuses at all here, but anyway. Entwined scarf. Here we go. It's a really uh, um, easy to memorize pattern. Knits and pearls, slip stitches, etc. And these needles, these big old needles, size US 15, 10 millimeter, my friend Heather from Winnipeg gave these to me way back when. They were like the first pair of knitting needles I ever had that did not belong to my grandmother. But anyway. So Jane has wisely suggested not wet blocking this because it will take two skeins of the Magnum. Uh, and, I mean, I don't know how much each one weighs, but the, it's, well, 250 grams. Eight ounces each. That's like, that's a lot. So, yeah. Um, quite a heavy scarf if you wet blocked it. I feel like it would just be a wet, stretched out, sopping, smelly scarf. So, I'm not going to do that. Probably going to steam it or pin it out and spritz it. We'll see. I kind of made that sound really gross, but she recommends not to do it, and I can definitely see why. So I kind of rambled on about that, but that's the entwined scarf. And right now it's living in a project bag that I might recognize from Dana made this for me. Um, a little teacup, some birds. I think I showed it to you one time before, but that's where it's living right now. And the last work in progress I'm going to show you is in something that I bought online in kind of a, I, I don't know why I bought it, quite honestly. Um, my friends were like, that's not you. That's not your color. Why are you buying that? Anyway, it's hot pink. It's pretty pink. So this is the Plucky Knitter colored uh, field bag from Fringe Supply Co. And I've got my little ugly sweater pin on it. That's what it's called. It's not ugly, but anyway. Anyway, it's bright and cheerful. And like I said, I like gray. But here, we, here it is anyway. And inside, I am working on a project with the most luxurious yarn. It's all about luxurious yarn today, isn't it? Here's the pink. Oh, I'll put that over there. Yeah, it's all right. 
And then here's the burgundy. It's still kind of a mess, but. Hmm. And let me see if I have the names of the. What is my ruler? Let me see if I have the names because uh, they were cute, the names of the colors. The yarn is Sweet Fiber. And I purchased it last year in Toronto when we were visiting TJ's family. And it is cashmere. It's 100% cashmere. So it's definitely a treat to work with. No, I don't have it in here yet. I should look it up here for you. But yes, yeah, so it's Sweet Fiber Cashmere DK. Oh, here, I can tell you I have the names. Bloom. Ina's Red. I love this color. And this is for a test knit for Joanne. She has a group and a blog called Fine Lightness. And these are called the Slow Days Mittens. And they're just the sweetest. to do the thumb but it's just a lovely pattern um, some really cool techniques that are being used and I think I have to get rid of this little nub here does this happen to you when you do a Kitchener stitch I have this little nub from where I finished off I'm gonna weave it in underneath but so if you have any tips for how to get rid of that when you're doing socks or mittens after you do the Kitchener stitch, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah. Slow Days Mittens, and they're going to be released in November sometime. So keep an eye out. And maybe we'll even have a giveaway. Who knows? So I have this one done. I need to finish the other one because I think the test ends, like, on the 14th, which will be tomorrow. Anyway. There we go. That's all for on the needles today. Oh, when I was looking for this hat, I found my caramel brulee hat. They were in the same drawer. So here it is. This is knit in Madeline Tosh. More a uh, vintage, I believe. Just a nice sturdy hat. My friend Leanne suggested knitting it. Um, I had the yarn and I wanted a suggestion of a good pattern pairing. Kind of like a wine and cheese pairing, but yarn and pattern pairings. And she suggested this one, Caramel Brulee, and she had made it. And it is cabled, but it just, I probably knit it in two evenings. It's just, it whipped right by. So, yeah. Caramel Brulee. Here's my hats. All right, yes, so that's all for On the Needles and then a bonus finished project. <clears throat> the Out and About segment today is going to go way back in time to October 15th. Uh, about a month ago, uh, one Saturday, uh, TJ and I went to Sussex to help Legacy Lane Fiber Mill celebrate their 10 years in business. And I have a little video clip to share of me there and a few little pictures and, and whatnot. I saw Michelle from Maple Moose Fibers there and her friend Andrea was with her. And Andrea and I both did the compass shawl test pattern. We both we both test knit that, uh, and hope she's okay with me saying that. I know uh, some people are private, but I think it's okay. 
Hey friends and woolies, I'm here in Sussex at Legacy Lane Fiber Mill. They are celebrating their 10th anniversary in business and I think that's an awesome accomplishment that should be celebrated. Uh, I have taken some pictures and some videos and I'm going to show them to you now and uh, then I'll show you some of the goodies that I got today. And there's alpacas. Show them the alpacas over there. Alpacas. And there are demonstrations, uh, felting, weaving, needle, rug hooking, rug hooking, and a few other things. So yeah, uh, congratulations Legacy Lane on 10 years. So we went down and yeah, Sussex is a lovely little town. I went to college there actually. And Legacy Lane is in an industrial park, but it doesn't feel industrial. When you go into the shop, they've got beautiful woven blankets, yarns, finished knit products. They also had demos that day of uh, needle, felting, uh, rug hooking, spinning, and they have looms permanently set up. So I took lots of pictures. I brought some things home. And one of the things I brought home is actually something that will be given away to one of you. I'll do it here. I guess it doesn't have to be in Woolies. So Legacy Lane is known for their dryer balls. Alpaca dryer balls. And here's a three pack. I'm gonna take them out to show you. They come in a beautiful bag with the label. And yeah. So, um, while we were there, we took a studio, not a studio, a mill tour. And I believe Allison gave that tour. Legacy Lane was started by two sisters. They originally were going to, they wanted to start an alpaca farm, but then they did a bunch of research uh, in order to receive this grant, a startup grant from the province of New Brunswick or the government of Canada, but I think it was New Brunswick. And they found that there were already several alpaca farms, but what was happening was that the producers had no place to have their fiber processed. So that led them then to start the mill. And then they won the, the proposal, the grant proposal. And so that enabled them to, I think, start up with some of their equipment and whatnot. And I, for as long as I have heard the name Legacy Lane, I have heard about their dryer balls. So they are alpaca. There's three, three in a bag. And they're all different because essentially nothing is wasted in their mill. So the yarn here that is wrapped around the, the felted ball is um, ends from uh, yarn that they have milled, they've spun. And Allison was talking about their employees and the man that comes in and does these. He's a local man, they're all handmade, hand felted, and I think he comes in and his only job is making the balls. Let me see here. Save money on dry time, eco-friendly alternative to dryer sheets. No dyes, uh, they dry clothes faster and they reduce wrinkling while softening. So yeah, they're a natural green alternative to dryer sheets made of hypoallergenic alpaca. And this is what I really like. You can scent your dryer ball with a few drops of your favorite essential oil. And yeah, so one lucky winner is going to win these. Yay. And my question that I would like answered in order to be entered is, in what ways do you try to make your household more green or more eco-friendly? That's what I want to know. I'm interested to hear what you choose to do, if you choose to do anything and if you choose not to do anything. You can say that too, no judgment.
we're all in different places and spaces, so yeah. I'll draw for the draw Legacy Lane Dryer Balls on the next issue, episode. Uh, but yeah, tell me how you choose to make your home a greener environment. And uh, I'll be drawing next episode. So that was a fun day at Legacy Lane. Um, I always like seeing them and obviously supporting. I consider them a local business. They're in Sussex, which is an hour away. And uh, I think it's fantastic that they have not only stayed in business for 10 years, but they have grown and they've expanded. Um, I think that they've won several awards for their, their woven products. And um, I, I think they have a great reputation out there. So have you ever heard of Legacy Lane? Let me know. Uh, oh, I should say that on Instagram, they are Legacy Lane Fiber Mill, F-I-B-E-R, Fiber Mill. And their website is LegacyLaneFiberMill.ca. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you about, it's not really knitting related, but it is related to my, the local area here, and, and maybe even my own family history. Uh, so there's a lady named Melinda Jarrett, who is a local author, and she's written a couple books on war brides, Canadian war brides. And I think I've talked about it before that TJ and I really like military history and things like that. So um, he suggested going to the book launch for her latest book called Letters from Bewley. Which here it is. And essentially, it's a book about her grandfather and the men of the Canadian Forestry Corps in Scotland from 1940 to 1945. And it's, there's a lot of photos and letters, and it was really a great undertaking. They had all these letters transcribed, and I don't know, it was just a really interesting talk. She spoke a lot about a man from the village of Fredericton Junction, which is where this um, book launch happened. Um... But one interesting thing that I really wasn't aware of when we got there was she was talking a lot about the Frasers. And in Scotland, their estate and the clan Fraser and um, and my mother, her maiden name is Fraser. So, and they're from Scotland, obviously. And I just was just, I don't know, I was... I just felt very serendipitous that TJ wanted to go to this book launch because he knew of the author and then for me that there was maybe a family connection um, to some of the uh, people mentioned in the book. She talked about the Frasers and how this particular, like the clan Fraser, their estate was here in Scotland and how actually... It was that line of Frasers that when they came to New Brunswick, um, they became what are called the United Empire Loyalists. And my family, uh, it's a, a title that's passed down through the mother's side. Um, so my family are United Empire Loyalists. And uh, so they're talked about in here a little bit. And so now I'm gonna do some research and see if there might be any connection I think it would be great if maybe I could find one. <laughs> My uncle has done some family research, so I, I'm i probably, he's probably going to pick up a copy and maybe see if he can find out. But anyway, Letters from Bewley. She has a website. It's lettersfrombewley.com. And there's a whole searchable database uh, in there. Another cool thing is that a guy I used to work with he built her website. He volunteered to build it, which was pretty nice. So yeah, letters from Bewley, Melinda Jarrett. So that was my second out, out and about. That just happened last Tuesday. And then the last thing that I've sort of been up to is last night I went to a gallery opening 
uh, or a show opening at a gallery, I should say. And it was my first, first one. It was really, it was cool. There were lots of people there, lots of people dressed all sorts of different ways. It wasn't pretentious or, you know, necessarily a fancy event. Um, people just came to show their support. And so it was at the Gallery on Queen in Fredericton. Uh, it's on Queen Street. And the show was Artists Under Age 35. And uh, I had been introduced to the work of one of the artists before. My friend has a couple of her pieces. And it was just really interesting. And uh, we ended up going out to dinner with two of the artists and then having drinks with them and then a couple of the other ones and then the gallery owner and it just was really fun way outside of my comfort zone totally um but in a good way right so my goodness I didn't get home till 11 o'clock so not like me <laughs> but I guess I want to mention the three artists that I they all were wonderful, let me just say, but there were three that particularly struck a chord with me. The first is Marcus Kingston. He is from, I believe, Harvey Station or Harvey, New Brunswick. So he's a local guy. And he described himself as being an old soul. And that definitely comes out in his work. He likes to focus on the beautiful old architecture. And he does a lot of drawing in pen and pencil. So he doesn't have, he has an Instagram account, but he hasn't posted any pictures. So that doesn't help you. He teaches uh, at the New Brunswick College of Craft and Design, though. Marcus Kingston is his name. The second is uh, Chantal uh, Corey. And she definitely has Instagram. I'll look it up here for you. She is an artist from Montreal, and she's just the sweetest woman. I love, I loved talking to her. I loved her, her aesthetic. Um, yeah, she just was really sweet, and it was interesting. Like she described her, her aesthetic, and how you know, how she painted people and and how she got her inspiration and a lot of them are her friends but she said she is obsessed with clipping out images of people from newspapers and she uses those as reference a lot so her instagram name is Chantal Corey studio and I'll spell it out here for you um, yeah she's a painter of lost glamour and awkward beauty and yeah she's just the sweetest woman She's under 35, so woman, girl. Um, and then the last was Jack Bishop. He is originally from, uh, I believe he said, Chris Pam Sis, New Brunswick. He lives in Halifax now. And it was interesting. His studio was over an army surplus store, and it's one that TJ and I have been to before. Um, anyway, that was just a little interesting tidbit. But what he does uh, he, he also does not have Instagram, or he does, no pictures. He has a Tumblr page, and I'll, I'll link to that here. But he described his work as the group of seven on a car in a carpool. The group of seven in a carpool. And it's very, uh, his, his colors are cool. They're, they're realistic, but then there's like pops of bright color. Um, and what he does is he, what's the word? He focuses on consumerism. So they're not just paintings of the woods and whatever. It's, you know, there's definitely like brand name stores in his, in his work. Um, it's really cool. He's a really neat person. Um, like I said, we had dinner with, Marcus and him and and uh, Jack and then we went to another place and we all had drinks together after drinks and dessert 
so yeah, it was really fun. I a little piece is is coming home with me eventually. Um, I don't have it yet, but I'll show it to you when it does. So yes, that's been my out and about. Um, I was in St. John a couple weeks ago, but I'll tell you a little bit about that in my curating life section. So, Curating a life. It's been uh, a while since I recorded. The last episode was October 1st. And I have been... I put myself on a spending freeze a couple weeks ago, which I've since broken. Um, but I have not been getting any mail lately of things um, coming. Uh, so most of the things I want to show you I've had for a couple weeks or even a month maybe. But I want to still share them with you because I think they're worthy of being uh, promoted, I guess. Let's start. Actually, my friend got me this magazine. We kind of have this thing where if I if I'm buying something that I know that she would want, I'll buy two. And then if she's buying something she knows that I would want, she'll buy two. And then we just it all evens out in the wash, I think. So the first thing is the Cole magazine. which you probably have seen popping up on your Instagram feeds. And it is, I, I read it the other night from front to back. It's just, it's a visually interesting publication. This is a premier issue and it was published in, it says Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. But I feel like the the editor, she also lived for a long time in Amsterdam. Um, so it kind of has, I don't know, just a really modern aesthetic to it. And at the so there's knitting, there's crochet, there's weaving, there's, um, oh, I'm going to save this one for last. There's, um, po talk about pottery, there's a whole pattern section, there's even a part, um, in the back where there's some recipes, there's macrame, which is really cool, um, because it shows it with plants, kind of modern macrame, right, um, and the piece that I wanted to mention is that there's, there's a rug hooking pattern, and my mom used to rug hook and I believe my grandmother did too and I my, they have a mom has a like a rug or a yeah it's a rug I mean it's a bedside bed side sized it's not big mat it's a mat not a rug I guess but it had roses on it and it used to be in my my little reading nook as a kid and I remember laying on the floor because it was a small nook, no room for a chair. And I would lay on the floor on this rug hooked mat and read books. And anyway, so the fact that latch hooking is maybe making a comeback, comeback just really excites me. So, so yes, Cole magazine, it's available. I know you can get it from Fringe Supply Co. I know Pearl Soho carries it. Um, yeah, I mean, check it out. It's, um, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth the price. And I'm looking forward to their next, next edition. They do mention that a couple, of, like most of their patterns in the first one are a little bit more basic. Uh, just sort of to as a, like a soft introduction for maybe people who are, are seeing this magazine for the first time. Um, but the next episode, the next issue will probably have projects that are a bit 
less basic, to put it that way. So that's Cole Magazine. I have I received some things from Shetland from Shetland Wool Week festivities. I have my my T-shirt Wool Week, yay! And I I got a few little notebooks too. This one's blank inside. As is this little guy. Good for little sketches or notes or whatever. And I got a, the t-shirt and I got a bag and a dish towel. But they all pretty much have the same logo on them. So I figured that ordering some things was cheaper than going to Shetland for the event. Although it's definitely on my bucket list. There's so many things. I feel like I need to take maybe mid from mid-August till November 1st. I need to just take it off work. And go to Shelton Wool Week, go to um, Curious Handmaid's Cottage Retreat, hit up all the festivals in the States, go to Knit City, just, oh my goodness, it's never going to happen. Not all in one year anyway. Mm. But I've been seeing a lot of you guys have been, been going to, you know, events that are close to you or picking one to travel to. And I'm just, I love kind of living vicariously through you. So that will do for now. Okay. Um, this is a bracelet. It's called the Columbia Collection. And it's by JR Studio. And her is Jocelyn Ross, and she's from Calgary. Okay, so this is a bracelet slash necklace collection. And I saw it, uh, jo is it Joji Locatelli was wearing it in one of her pictures. And then I looked it up and found that it was a Canadian designer. So it's three pieces. It's These two, okay, these are white jade and then this is the longer piece, which could be a necklace or a bracelet. And it has the lotus symbol here as well. So this, the Columbia Collection, encourages one to explore unknown territory and creativity while at the same time paying appropriate attention to detail. The white jade is calming and grounding stone that protects the wearer from negative energies. It brings peace, harmony, and luck. And I just, I mean, I don't know what stock I put into those kind of things. I think they're a good symbol, a uh, good thing to think about, definitely. And beyond that, I don't really know. <laughs> but I think they're gorgeous. And yeah, they're beautiful. So Jocelyn, thank you very much. Um, um, she had them, she has tons of collections. Not tons, but I mean, it was very hard to make a decision as to which collection to, to order. Yeah, so and I'm, I'm sure that if you were looking for something specific, she would work with you um, to maybe pick the right one for what you're looking to have. So yeah, Handmade in Canada. She's from Calgary. And I, I you know, have a look. One thing I will say, because I, you know, I, I, um... I value every single one of you as a viewer, and I, I always want to tell you my honest thoughts on things. Um, I definitely think this bracelet, the product, is worth the price. 
uh, it's handmade, uh, well-crafted, and whatnot. However, I, I was a little bit, I'll tell you the whole story, but, um, so when I checked out, I forgot to add shipping to my order. And so she graciously said, we, we talked back and forth, and she was going to send me an invoice for that, for shipping. And um, we were talking back and forth, and I just mentioned that I would I would talk about it on the podcast. And so she graciously agreed to waive the shipping fee, you know, for a little bit of promotion, which is fair. Um, and that's, that's all well and good. Um, I, I'm comfortable with that. Um, but where I, I just had a little bit of a question um, was the shipping cost on the website was a flat rate and there was quite a difference between the flat rate and the actual shipping cost and I realized that perhaps she has a flat rate um, and you know maybe she makes some on on some and loses some on other orders um but I guess, and maybe I should ask her, like, how she came to decide on her flat shipping rate. Um, or, or maybe she shipped mine at a cheaper cost because she was sending it for free. I'm not sure. Um, but, I mean, if you are ordering from her, and honestly, I think the shipping to the States was cheaper than the shipping within Canada, um, which is no surprise to Canadians. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that, and but I definitely would encourage you to have a look at her website and see if there's something there that you love because I think it's important to support local Canadian designers, whether they're fiber artists or not. So, and so you'll probably see me wearing this from time to time because I really love it. It goes with everything, even gray. I'm going to show you. So when I was in St. John a couple weeks ago, um, I didn't buy my St. John pennant there, but I wanted to put it up to show you guys. I got it at a old time collectibles here in Fredericton, but I've been having such fun going to St. John lately and seeing all my friends from there. Uh, Whitney had a baby, a baby boy, and he is just perfect. And the day I was down there, to meet him and see her, I also met up with a new friend. Her name is Ingrid, and she and I, I feel like we have been friends forever, like or we should have been, because it's amazing that we've not met before, considering our interests and some of our mutual friends. And so I was finishing up something called The Whole 30 when I met her, and she was just getting ready to start a round of Whole30. So she had she made this card. She designed it. It's called Knits and Bits. And this is it. Mmm, cake. And it's a yarn cake, right? And she says to my new friend Meredith, um, how lucky for us the best sort of cake is Whole30 approved. So yarn cake is okay on Whole30. But it's so fun, eh? I think her mother-in-law does the like the the watercolor work and anyway she gave me also this little magnet that she designed knitting forever housework whenever I love it so thank you Ingrid and I'm so glad we got to connect we connected through the whole 30 and then started talking and realized that you know we should have been friends years ago and that's always such a cool thing for me because I find it really hard to meet people that I uh, just feel comfortable with. And I definitely, like, I met her and we just hit it right off. So thanks, Ingrid, for being my new friend. <laughs> uh, okay, what else? Oh, so Ingrid and I, we had our lunch at Real Food Connections in St. John that day. And then we went to Good Vibrations, which is next door. This is sort of out and about, but I also picked up a few things. So that's why it's in Curating Life. And I picked up some yarn at Good Vibrations. It's merino, cashmere, nylon, stellina. 
hand painted and it's 4.3 ounces. And again, my friends are like, Meredith, that's so not you. Those aren't your colors. But this is Christmas yarn, guys. Wouldn't you say it's sparkly Christmas yarn? Jingle bells, right? So I picked that up from Liz. And I'm going to be making, I'm going to swatch with it, see how the pooling works out first, and then go from there in terms of what I make. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Christmas socks, but really cashmere, nylon, Stellina, they might make a cute pair of mittens, right? Christmas mittens? Anyway, I have small hands, so I could probably knit a pair out of once, one cake, yarn cake. Uh, yesterday on Instagram, I posted a picture of some ingredients that I, that I use or anybody would use to make almond milk. And a couple people were really excited to see that and wanted to know how I did it, what that was about and everything. So, um, several episodes ago, maybe even episode 10, I was talking about getting healthier and being more aware of what I was eating and ultimately losing some weight. Um, and so part of my journey through to that has been to do something called the Whole30, which I believe I've talked about before. But it's essentially an elimin elimination diet which helps you change your relationship to food and how you eat, your eating habits. And as part of that, you cut certain things out of your diet for 30 days. And I must say, I loved the rigidity of the program. Uh, it's a free program. You don't need to buy anything. There's no shakes or supplements or any website that you have to subscribe to. Uh, it's just, I mean, you can. There's a book if you want to read it. But you can get that for free from your local library. Um, essentially, it's 30 days with no soy, no MSG, no added sugar of any kind, no grain and no dairy and no alcohol. And the first time I heard about it, I thought, it's crazy, it's never gonna happen. These people are fanatics, why would they do that? Um, but after Conrad passed away and after I just kind of I will say I probably lost control with just how I was eating and letting my emotions take over and I just was feeling horrible. And I don't want to say I hit rock bottom or anything, but I just really felt I needed to do something and it was a good time to do something drastic or maybe drastic isn't the right word, but something that would help me commit to a 180, right? So the whole 30 was amazing. I did it from September 10th uh, to October whatever, 30 days later. And then I started again on October 10th. And I just finished my second round um, November 8th. So I felt great. I have lost some weight, but um, what we call non-scale victories have been phenomenal. Like, um, I've noticed my teeth are whiter, I'm sleeping better, my fingernails have grown and are so much stronger, my hair I feel is shinier, um, my complexion's better, I'm happier, I have more energy, they call it tiger blood. Uh, what else? My heartburn is gone. I used to get heartburn when I would drink water and it's completely gone. And yeah, I just, I really like that way of eating. Now it's not a forever thing. It's completely unrealistic to eat that way forever. But I really enjoy the fact that committing to something like that for 30 days helps you break not only physical habits, but psychological habits related to food as well. So they say Whole30 will change your life, and I definitely uh, can say that it changed mine. So, uh, almond milk. <laughs> the Whole30 is why I've been making my own almond milk. 
And uh, so for you, Erin, essentially, and anybody else that wants to know, essentially you just soak a cup of almonds uh, for like 8 to 12 hours or overnight and in water and then you drain it and rinse it. Some people will soak it with a pinch of salt, but I, I've only done that once. And then you combine four cups of water, the drained almonds, pinch of sea salt. I use three chopped up dates without the pits. You can use one or zero or two or five. I use three. And a vanilla bean or vanilla paste or extract, whatever you want. And uh, cinnamon, pinch of cinnamon, uh, or like pumpkin spice, something like that. And then you blend it in a blender for about a minute. And then after that, um, you can drain it through a cheesecloth to get all the pulp out. Um, I bought a nut bag for that purpose. And yeah, you soak out all the pulp. And then you're left with a yummy, delicious almond milk. And, and you know exactly what's in it and how fresh it is. And I haven't made anything with the leftover pulp yet, but I've made five, I think, batches of almond milk. Um, and I've been saving all the pulp because you can dehydrate it, grind it into almond flour, or you can dehydrate it and make it into a granola. So... I'm channeling my inner hippie, hippie dippy, <laughs> with just nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, I I don't know if it saves me any money or not, but I really like doing it at home. So, that's that. All right, as always, my favorite section to talk about, Woolies. This is going to be a mega-packed Woolies section today, let me just say, right away. It's been a while since I have um, put up a project of the episode from the group, but I have one today that I chose. It is by, and I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing this correctly, uh, Hissa. H-I-I-S-A, and your real name is Sana, I think, and you're from Western Finland. And the project that you knit that I'm going to feature today are the Yellow Arched Gusset Mittens. And it's a pattern, a free pattern, by Pearl Soho. And you knit it in this just cheerful yellow color. And when I saw it, when I was looking through all the projects, it just made me smile. So, yeah, that's the, the project of the episode, and um, I see you've knit a couple pairs of these, and I think that they're just sunny and bright and cheerful, and I really like it. And I'm just looking here at the yarn. You use a Finnish sheep wool, and in the other pair you made, they're like a bluey color. I'm going to see what yarn you use for that, if you say. No. But again, it's just a really nice, simple pattern, and I, I really I like the looks of it. So thank you for sharing that in the group. And again, I do try to pick a project every episode uh, to highlight your beautiful work. All right, we already talked about the giveaway for the dryer balls, so don't forget to, to enter that. And right now, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to do the draw for the Taproot Wander magazine. And there's a pencil that goes with it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the group on my phone. And I'm going to click into that giveaway. There were... 34 entries. I'm going to do random number generator and pick one. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to close the thread first because I didn't do that earlier. 
locked, saved. All right, random number generator. Here we go, random number generator. You can't see that. Random.org, so what did I say? There were, there were 35 entries, I believe. Let me go back and just clarify that. 35 voices. All right, so I was post number one. So we're gonna go two through post number 35. Okay. Two through 35. You see? Ooh, sort of. Yeah, there we go. Generate. Do, 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 do. Nine. Nine. Who is number nine? It's on the first page. Steffi Pants, you are the winner. I love wandering in the forest trails with my dogs and my loved ones. Thanks for the giveaway. And Steffi Pants, you, I don't know where you live. Um, it doesn't say, but I will send you a, a note and if you see this first, send me a note. Um, but thanks for entering the giveaway. And I'll get this mailed off. I have a couple giveaways to send, so I'll probably go do them all together. That's great. All right, two more things I want to talk about in Woolies. The first is you saw my Christmas yarn, my sock yarn. And I was in wondering if you guys would be interested in a Christmas sock Cal. Last year, I believe we did the, I'm trying to remember if we did the Christmas Eve cast on. So that's one option to cast on a pair of socks on Christmas Eve. Or if you want to do a, cat, a, a knit along that starts earlier so that you have Christmas socks ready to wear at Christmas. So please let me know what you think. I'll open a thread about that. And yeah, Whatever you guys want to do, I think it'll be fun. So I'm on the hunt also for more Christmas yarn, more Christmas sock yarn. So if you know of any dyers or companies that make a kick butt Christmas yarn, let me know. So that is really, that's all the like wool gathering collective stuff I have to talk about today, all the regular podcast stuff. The next little period of time is going to be um, me drawing the prizes for the Canada Cal 2016, which ended in September. Yes, I know, it's the middle of November now, but it is what it is. Uh, so if you have no interest in hearing who won the prizes, I will say goodbye for now, uh, and thank you for joining me. But if you would like to stick around and see who won, and maybe you won, then we will get started on that. There were tons of entries in the Canada Cal and the person, so I went through and I, I wrote out all of the entries that came in and they were, so many. It was amazing. And of course, like, um, if you used a Canadian yarn and a Canadian pattern, that would be two entries. So that was really fun kind of seeing who had the most, the most entries. And um, that person, E. Garner, you had the most, the most entries. I think I sent you a message about it. I think you had like 21 or 22 entries, but really what what launched you into like first place in that regard was the fact that pretty much everything you knit was a Canadian pattern, a Canadian yarn, and some had a Canadian theme as well. So that's great. All right. How I decided to do the prizes was we received some amazing 
donations from Canadian designers and yarn dyers or yarn companies. And instead of giving away like one thing to a bunch of people, uh, what I decided to do was make bundles. And hopefully you, I'm going to kind of describe what the bundles are. And this, so it might have been confusing when you read it on the thread, if you did see it in the group. Um, I decided to kind of make the prize categories to name them after yarn weights. Okay, so the categories have nothing to do with who knit with lace weight, who knit with worsted, who knit with bulky in the knit along at all. It's just like a symbolic name. So I'm going to draw seven winners for the lace weight category. And so like lace is light. It's maybe like honorable mention, you know, if you were to categorize it that way. Um, I am going to draw eight winners for the fingering category. One winner for the worsted category and one winner for the bulky category. And all of the categories and what are included in those are on the Ravelry group under winners and prizes. So I'm going to start by drawing the seven lace weight winners. And this, there's like 350 entries in here. And so... The first lace weight winner for a Knitted Bliss JC pattern is Dance. So I'm going to put that right there. The next one, also for a Knitted Bliss JC pattern, is E Garner. You got a lot of them in here. I didn't make up any rules that people could win twice, but... Uh, for a Heidi K Designs pattern, knit, pip, and pin. Another Heidi K Designs, Romper Lust. For a very Shannon pattern, to show you how I'm drawing here. Michelle PEI, congrats. For a Sylvia McFadden or Sylvia Bovilvia pattern, Steph AB. And for Kiyomi Bergen's Fredericton sweater pattern, Eerily Knits. Congratulations. Okay, on to the eight fingering weight winners. One skein of blue brick DK in the ombre colorway and one very Shannon pattern. These are also small. Lily Yaz. One skein of Agristol Yarn Bow River Lace and Kiyomi Bergen Sweater Pattern. Meow Bunny. One skein of Ancient Arts Fiber Crafts, your choice, and a Heidi K Pattern. Serena Darren. Uh, the book Rugged Knits and a pattern download from Andrea as well. And a 50% uh, off Allure Chow pattern. Rose Bob. $25 gift certificate for Indigo Dragonfly and 50% off Allure Chow pattern. I Bergeron. Or Al Bergeron. $30 gift certificate for Trailhead Yarns 
and the Bliss JC pattern. Karen MacD. Oops. Five Lucy Neat Bee downloads and Knitted Bliss JC pattern. Wheels Wife. And one skein of Yarn Indulgence's Z Lux Sock MCN and a Sylvia McFadden pattern. Nat <laughs> Natuli Kathoon. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Okay. So congratulations. All right. The worsted winner. One winner here. This is a Briggs, Briggs and Little six skeins of Regal in your choice. The Owls on Dante stitch marker set. Kiyomi Bergen's Fredericton sweater pattern. And one Sylvia McFadden pattern. Han Supu. Whoops. I'm not really good at saying these names. They're all so unique. Congratulations. Okay. And the bulky prize winner. $50 gift certificate from Sweet Fiber, Andrea, Andrea Rangel's book, Rugged Knits, and a pattern download from her, the Euclid gift pack, a Vera Shannon pattern, a Knitted Bliss pattern, and 50% off Laura Chow's uh, one of her patterns. This is the grand prize. These joys. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone. I'll be reaching out to you uh, with information about how to claim your prize if you need to, or uh, if I can send it to you, I will. Um, so just please uh, watch your Ravelry inbox for that. Thank you again for everybody that entered the Knit Along. It really was heartening to see how many people participated, and it was a lot of fun, too. So that's all for today. I've really enjoyed spending time with you and it's been quite the little bit of excitement here for me drawing all the prizes for you as well. Um, again, I'll remind you, we have the, the newest uh, giveaway for the Legacy Lane Dryer Balls and I'd love to hear your opinion about a Christmas sock knit along. So hop over to the Ravelry group, which is Ravelry, or on Ravelry, it's Wool Gathering Collective and let me know your thoughts. Thank you.